Right, let's discuss the developments in Syria with Soraya Foss, an independent U.S. presidential candidate, being with us here on RT International. Soraya, thank you very much. Uh, now, we are hearing that the U.S. apparently didn't inform Russia about the exact coordinates of their attack. Why do you think that is? First of all, I don't believe the U.S. we have any right to be in Syria if we weren't invited to be there. Um, unfortunately, uh, we obviously have seen that the U.S. has its own interests for being there because of our supposed allies, whether it's Saudi Arabia or Turkey or Qatar even. It's really sad to see how we're not coordinating with Russia in order to work on this. Uh, Russia is the only one right now that knows exactly what's going on. And had we been working with the Russians from day one, we wouldn't have the escalation that we're having today. Uh, well, right now, the U.S. and Russia worked together to create this ceasefire deal. How do you think that this incident will affect uh, that particular agreement? Well, as far as I can see, the ceasefire was intentional in order for the U.S. airstrike to take place. Um, I don't believe it's an accident, unfortunately. It's really sad to say, as an American, seeing how things are developing, this current administration has proven that they are allies of ISIS. We cannot say that we are fighting terrorism when we are allowing for something like this to happen. It makes me really wonder whose side is this current administration on? I feel there's a lot of things that are not being brought out into the light. As we've seen, even Hillary Clinton has posted videos saying that she's helped um, create ISIS. And also McCain has someone else who's been very outspoken about shooting Russian planes who are trying to stop the terrorists that are there now. Now, those are some pretty strong allegations uh, in terms of the, the U.S. is actually supporting ISIS and not, not trying to uh, fight that they didn't really want this ceasefire in the first place. Um, it, it, tell me a little bit more about that before we go on to the next question, because that's those are some pretty strong allegations there. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, you have to take a look at it. I mean, who are our allies? We really shouldn't be looking at Saudi Arabia as our allies or Turkey. Well, there's nothing that has that we have in common with them. They don't have a democracy. There's no human rights. There's no women's rights. Nothing of that sort. Only because of the oil that lies in the Golan Heights, the natural gases that they found. It, this is all interest at the expense of the people. And we're not just talking about the Americans that are risking their lives even being there from the start. Syria is a sovereign nation, okay? And we they have representation in the United Nations. I believe the United States, us, our government, including all international governments, need to respect that. Whether or not they agree with the current um, position of the government that's in place right now this is a government that was elected by the people and they need to respect that the only people that have a right to be in syria is the people that the syrian government invites to their country to help them what happened today is a declaration of war on a sovereign nation that's all that can be said and i hope the well, u.n security council really takes that into consideration today sir if you look at the agreement that is in place uh that i mean that was just brokered the united states and russia worked together uh it was actually agreed to by the syrian government they agreed to those terms so uh, in, in essence, they have invited the United States to be part of their deal. Do, do you think that this is just comes down to better data intelligence sharing and cooperation that could have prevented the attack, or do you think that this is just the U.S. Uh, going its own? No, I think this is the U.S. acting upon the interest of allies against said allies that are not allies in reality. And as we can tell, there's no such thing as moderate rebels. A terrorist is a terrorist. Why do we call them a terrorist when an act of terrorism is taken upon our nation, yet when things are happening outside, they're called moderate rebels? We cannot arm any of these people, any of these extremists. I understand it's an ideology and it's not the religion, but this is a reality and this is affecting the whole world, not just Syria or puts a threat to our nation or just Europe. We really need to take this very seriously and the only way how we're going to combat terrorism is if the United States current administration 
along with Europe and everybody else, takes this seriously and stops funding these other groups and works with Russia along with the Syrian current government to get rid of these people. This is ridiculous what's going on, and I feel it's not just an intelligence issue. This is an act of America wanting to be, it's an ego trip. That's what I think it is, honestly. And it's really sad for me to say that as an American. Okay, just because the Russians are there and they seem to be playing hero, well, we shouldn't have created these groups to then come in and play a superhero now, too late in the game. Had we participated with Russia, worked with them and their intelligence from the beginning of time, we wouldn't have the issues that we're having today, six years into the game. Now, it's uh, safe to say that the Syrian conflict is much more complicated than anyone gives it credit. Um, in your eyes, what does this incident mean for the future of the conflict? Again, I feel unless the U.S. really apologizes for what happened and chooses to work alongside the Russians and everybody else, and again, stop funding and rearming and training these people. They're doing this in Jordan, in Turkey, and all these other places. And it's sad to see how we can say that we want to combat the terrorism, yet at the same time, the minute they gain progress in destroying them, we are re-helping, arming them, and putting more people on the ground fighting the wrong side. Whose side are we really on? And another thing I want to give credit to is Donald Trump. I understand I'm running a race and each one has their own. It does not mean that I cannot agree on his policies. I do feel that he's right on Russia 100%. Because had we worked with them from the beginning again, I already, we, we wouldn't have the conflict we're having today. Now, uh, I understand that you feel the U.S. was late to the table, but on the subject of U.S. and Russia cooperation, uh, Vladimir Putin urged uh, for the details of the ceasefire conflict to be made public, but the U.S. didn't think that it was a good idea. Here is what the Russian president thought about that decision. Let's take a listen. It is connected to the difficulties the United States is experiencing in Syria. They still can't separate the so-called healthy part of the opposition from half-criminal and terrorist elements. I think that's dictated by the desire to preserve fighting potential in the fight against the legitimate government of President Assad. And apparently they don't want to publicize the peace deal for the sole reason that it will be immediately clear to the international community, to the Americans and the Russians, who is not complying with what. So the independent U.S. Um, so basically, does Putin have a point there, or is the U.S.'s stance justified? I think what's going on right now is a lot of stuff is being hidden and kept from the American people, not just the American people, the public in general. It's the media's fault. The media is no longer working to provide concrete information to the people for them to know. It's backing the interests of the corporations that own these agencies, and that is really sad. I really feel that it should have been made public. The same thing with Hillary Clinton's emails and everything that's going on. It's